Hi there again. And I'm going to show you how I printed out this cool scene. Just take it to this one here. Okay, so here's the Radome Tower. And I made it in 3ds Max. Just lots of truss components here. Fused the mesh together. This top part where the truss ends, and it, I suppose in real life it supports the Radome structure and also perhaps houses the radar on top of it as a sort of metal box and I just made a box I inserted it there I made it hollow so I extruded it inwards and then I made splits the parts split used used the slice tool sorry to slice it a number of times and then extrude these parts so it's pretty basic modeling that you can do in most software packages and this is a geosphere and it's cut there so that the dome will rest on this sphere. Okay. Um, many 3D programs don't have a geosphere that instantly makes hexagons. One, two, three, four, five, six, yeah, it's a hexagon. So what you have to do, you have to sort of think, think about it and you go to geosphere. It's very easy. Go to geosphere and you bring the, the, the display. It's awful today. I need to look at my drivers. Seriously. Con okay. Convert this. Well, I'm going to take that down to wireframe for you. Take it to shaded actually and give it edged faces. That might work. Damn it, damn it, damn it. Okay, anyway, quickly, wireframe, select all vertices, and then all you do to make the triangles into hexagons, all you do is easy, you just chamfer it, like so, and can you see how instantly it makes these lovely hexagons all over the sphere, and then in this sphere, there's a lot more hexagons than the one I made for the geosphere. Okay. And then I, in order to get the, like the, the valley, the notches, I extruded it all over as individual polygons. And you can do that in your own program if you're not using Max. And then the character, I'll show you the character. And this was made using the free open source make human software some really nice details i modeled the character up i adjusted used the sliding parameters to you know adjust the nose size the eyes the hands etc 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 saying i've lost where he is okay here he is then I exported it into Max, 3ds Max, and then I added these components like a backpack, a hat, headphones, aerial, and this device, smartphone, <laughs> this device as well. In order to print it, you have to think about how it's going to print. Yep. If you just print it as a figure, and this figure is about four inches high, I think, this, when it prints, it can't print in thin air using the printer. I've got the desktop PLA ABS layer printer, additive printer, so it needs to make a big support that will take the support all the way up to here so it starts to support to print the hand. So you don't want that really, and you want to save time. You know, printing extra supports around the figure takes time. So if you think about it like an engineer, and as you can see in this this file, I've split it up like on a, one of these old model kits, and that's all on a flat bed surface, which I have this file is really giving me problems. I'll go to top again. You'll just have to see it from the top. Anyway, that's all flat on a flat layer. And again, that's probably why model kit makers used to do this, because it saves efficiency, it saves print time, and it saves space. 
So next I'm going to show you the 3D print result. So hello, and here are the 3D models that I've made. I'll just take this my calendar off. And here it's March 2017. So you can see the 3D prints and my hand better. So this is the gantry tower that was printed. And I'm using acrylic paints. It's quite rough. But when you take it to filming on the camera or a video camera like I want to do, it um, it doesn't look so bad because you know cam filming whoops, <laughs> filming loses the details. You know, and if you're making a close up like that, that's pretty cool. You know, you can have it panning across like that. Anyway, that's the top, and then this is the dome, the ray dome. I'll adjust the light more in the camera. And as you can see, that's the top of the tower. And there's some wax candle on that. So just put it on your tabletop. And then I glued it on top of that. And already you can see it looks nice. And the great thing, the really cool thing about 3D printing and real models when you're filming or taking photographs, you can adjust the light. You know? So to get it like an analogy feel in 3D graphics just takes too long in my opinion. I like 3D graphics, but instantly, you know, setting up a light, setting up a light source like that in 3D and making it look overexposed. It took ages. And what about a shadow? So say if I'm making a film and I make a shadow go down, it's just so much easier, so much organic. Um, here's the character that I printed out. And you can get a close-up of my hand as well. <laughs> so here's the close-up of the figure. And again, the details aren't great. You know, I'm not an amazing model painter. I don't, I mean, I do art. I kind of get frustrated with stuff that's too detailed. Whoa! And there's a bit of discretion for you. But anyway, as you can see, the figure is good enough to photograph and then take into post-production along with the radar. The next model I'm making a kind of housing structure that's part of the 3Z universe. And I'm getting, going to go and do airbrushing on that. So it might look a bit more polished, but what I'm not into is spending ages polishing models when I'm going to want to take photographs and film them. And I also want to soon do like an animation, put some lights in it, perhaps have some Arduino components and that sort of thing. So that's the end result. So you've seen from the 3D stage all the way up to the end print. And if you can hear, sorry about the sound in the background, that's my 3D printer printing 3D cows, futuristic cows for the Maker Fair. These cows I sell and they're available in my shop as well. Um, as they say, time and tide waits for no man or no one, as you have to say these days, and that's true. So always prepare for your exhibitions a month in advance. That's all for me now. Any comments or questions, please put below um, and support me on Patreon and you can buy my stuff on my online shop and also please check the accompanying blog to this um, video and I try and do a blog on my 3Z universe every week so bye for now thank you